to stay updated with latest videos and tips, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Press the bell icon and never miss any update. ...of different recordings, and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions, and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. At the end of the test, you will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section 1. Here are a number of different recordings, and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. Now turn to section 1. Section 1 You will hear two talking to their professor about the science and technology festival they attended. First, you have questions 1 to 6. Now listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 6. Hi Dylan. Hi Tanya. Thanks for coming to see me. I'm very interested to hear what you thought about the Science and Technology Festival. Well, we're both very pleased we went. Glad to hear it. Was there anything you both found especially useful? Yes, definitely. I saw at least two lectures that directly relate to the subjects I'm studying in this first semester. I already feel a little more prepared than I did last week. There wasn't anything that had the same effect on me, but that wasn't my only focus. I saw the festival as a chance to explore new ideas and other subject areas, so I also tried to attend some lectures that looked interesting rather than just the ones I thought would only be relevant to my course. I'm glad I didn't do that. I get too stressed when I don't concentrate on one thing. But wasn't it great to be able to wander around the university and get a better idea of where everything is? Well, I certainly feel more confident now I've explored the area a bit more. And I also found it very easy to meet people who share the same interests as me. When I was waiting for some of the lectures to start, I just got talking to whoever was sitting next to me. I was too busy going through my notes to do that. Huh. I have to say... Going to so many lectures in a short space of time really helped me to improve one area of study, my note-taking technique. Mm, I wasn't so sure about that originally, but... of study and research to the attention of the wider world and for me that's the festival exists you may have noticed when you were there that there were a number of university information stands set up around the campus did you see the free reference booklets that they were giving out no i assumed the stands were there to provide people with directions to each talk well, their aim was to encourage everyone to read some of the latest studies coming out of our labs and classrooms. Many of the lecturers at the festival actually wrote the studies that were listed. So the talk and the booklets together are a great introduction to their work for anyone who attended. 
but the staff were certainly happy to point people in the right direction if it was needed. I have to admit, it was quite confusing trying to follow some of the signs around the campus telling us where to go. So we used the map and the festival guidebook to find our way around. It was great for that. And although one or two of the talks actually started at different times to what was printed on the page, one other thing I did like about the guidebook was that it wasn't full of adverts. Oh, I agree. But that's always the case with festivals now. I don't mind that if it means that the festival is free to enter, as more and more of them are these days. And even if there is a fee for admission, the festival organisers hardly make any money from that, though they do tend to put the price of entry up each year. They have to make money to run the festival somehow, so it makes sense to get the majority of that through ads. That's a fair point. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 7 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 7 to 10. Um, how are the students at your place? Well, I haven't really met anyone yet. They all seem a bit quiet. Perhaps they're working hard. Mm. They don't appear to be very studious here, but they are very friendly. I must say, I've been doing a lot of sitting around and chatting over the last week or so. <laughs> well, the person I've spoken to really is my tutor, approachable, and seems to understand how difficult it can be starting university. Assessment. Yes. For the course I'm doing, we have to hand our first one in. Really? So, have you got the topic yet? No, but we'll get it soon. I'm not sure how much we have to write yet. Not too much, I hope. Mm, I know what you mean. And it's hard to study, especially where I am now. Oh? Where are you living? I'm living in a hall of residence. I thought that would be a good idea, as there'd be a lot of people around, but I'm finding it a bit noisy. I can see that I'm going to have problems when I really need to get down to some work. So, I guess you need to be somewhere on your own then? Yes. Well, I do like to have some people around me, so I'd prefer to live with a family somewhere, in a house not too far from the university. Well, good luck with that. Yes, thanks. And good luck to you as well. Oh, I have to dash now. I've another lecture in ten minutes. Bye for now. Bye. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section two. Section two. You will hear part of an advertising lecture. First, 
You have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 16. Let's look now at a famous example. In 1925, Alan O'Dell, who owned a small company that made a brushless shaving cream, noticed that gas stations and other located by putting up advertising signs along the nation's highways. He decided that he could increase his sales by putting up told himself, at remote places on the highway. Perhaps after arriving, they would appreciate a touch of rhyme and humour. They would indeed. It was not long before the catchy Burma shave signs, some ironic, some cynical, some absurd, but all of them funny, caught the fancy of nearly everyone, including those people usually critical of advertising. These signs continued as the advertising medium of the company for 35 years. And then, when cars travelled too fast to take in these messages, more than a dozen words painted in rather small letters, the company phased out its roadside advertising. Perhaps a growing criticism of this sort of advertising, which interfered with highway scenery, also influenced the company's decision. By late 1965, this criticism resulted in President Lyndon Johnson's Highway Beautification Bill. This bill authorised a federal state campaign to improve the scenery on either side of major highways to conceal or remove junkyards and to put billboards sufficiently far back from the highway so that they would not interfere with the view. States that did not comply with the bill could lose 10% of their federal highway grant. But this was not the end of the billboard industry. Many roads were not part of the highway system which was supported by federal grants and these roads were not affected by the law and nor were signs in commercial and industrial areas. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Other method you're going to practice this week is the bamboo certain conditions because the heat is below ground level. For example, if there's a strong wind and you're afraid a fire might spread. the bottom, sitting on the ground. You pour enough water in the top to fill the bottom section and then light a fire underneath that section to heat the water. Then you put your food inside the top section and the steam coming up the bamboo through the holes you made cooks it. I'm going to move on now to food itself. 
and talk about some of the wild plants you might cook. I'm going to begin with fungi. That's mushrooms and toadstools. I'm sure you'll be aware that some of these are edible and they're delicious, but some of them are highly poisonous. Now, whether they're poisonous or not, all fungi that you find in the wild should be cooked before eating because that helps to destroy any compounds in them that might be mildly toxic. But be aware that any amount of cooking won't make poisonous varieties any safer to eat. Unless you can definitely identify a fungus, you should never eat it. It's not worth the risk. And you need to be really sure because some fungi that are poisonous are very similar in appearance to certain edible varieties. They can easily be mistaken for each other. So having said all that, fungi are delicious when they're freshly picked. And although they are only moderately nutritious, they do contain minerals which the body needs. I'll move on now to leafy plants, which are generally... That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 3. Section 3 You will hear a conversation between an admissions officer and a manager from the university's technologies department. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Hello, I'm Randy Agotra from the Technologies Department. Ah, yes, good. I'm Dave Hadley. Thanks for coming to see me. That's OK. I believe you want us to do some work for you. Yes, that's right. Um, I'm responsible for student admissions to the college and I use a computer system to help process student enrolments and to do the timetabling. Uh -huh. But it really doesn't suit the way we work these days. It's the system has crashed, but in fact, it just takes ages to go from one st Right. Is that the only problem? Well, that's the main one, but there are others. In the past, doing the timetabling was quite simple, but now we have a lot more courses, and what's made it complicated is that many of them have options. Right, but the system should allow you to include those. Well, no, it doesn't. It was supposed to, and a few years ago we did ask someone from the technologies department to fix it, but they never seemed to have the time. Hmm. Are there any other issues with the system? Well, I've been given extra responsibilities, and so I have even less time to do the timetabling. 
If there was anything you could do, Run Deer, to make the process more efficient, that would be really helpful. Well, it sounds like you could do with an assistant, but that's obviously not possible. So what about having an online system that students can use to do their scheduling? How would that work? Well, it may mean less choice for students, but we could create a fixed schedule of all the courses and options, and they could then view what was available. And work it out for themselves. That sounds great. OK, so um, we'll need to improve the existing system or to build a completely new system. Well, I'd much prefer to have a new system. Quite frankly, estimate, I think we'll be looking at April system. It would take at least nine months, October at the earliest. Before you hear the rest of the discussion, both wildlife and sites of historic interest. There are many ways to explore the and public transport links are good. It is possible to leave your car behind and travel by boat, train, or bus with just short walks in between stops. The Trelor Valley Passenger Ferry runs between villages along the river estuary and provides a link with a train station at Barrie which is about 10 minutes' walk from the riverside village of Calton. In the past, the river was the main form of transport in the area, and as in the past, today's ferry service operates according to nature. The river estuary is tidal, and so the ferry timetable differs from day to day, according to the times and height of the tide. The ferry is also seasonal, normally running between April and September, depending on the weather. A timetable for the whole year can be downloaded from the Internet by visiting www.trelorferry.co.uk. If you just want to sit and relax and enjoy the lovely scenery, you can take a river cruise to Calton and back from the nearby city of Plymouth. In the past, steamships brought early tourists along the same route. Queen Victoria and her family enjoyed such a trip in 1856. The journey is quicker these days. The round trip takes between four and five hours, depending on tides and weather. If you prefer, you can travel upriver by boat and return to Plymouth by train. All cruise boats and trains have wheelchair access. For more information and for departure times, ring Plymouth Boat Cruises on 017-528-23104. Trains run several times a day throughout the year between Calton and Plymouth, with various stops in between. They are used by both local commuters and tourists who want to enjoy the beautiful scenery. The highlight of the journey is crossing the river on the stunning viaduct, which was built at the beginning of the 20th century and towers 120 feet over the water. It is unnecessary to book, 
and tickets can be bought on the train. For information about fares and timetables, contact National Rail Enquiries by phone or online. The bus service in the Trelor Valley now connects all train stations and villages in the area. Especially for holidaymakers, there's a rover ticket which can be used at weekends and on national holidays and allows unlimited journeys on those days. The rover ticket provides great value for money and is now even cheaper than it was last year. An adult ticket costs £5.50 a day. Senior citizens can travel for £4.50, and a family ticket for up to five people costs just... You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 4. Section 4 You will hear a student discussing his case study with his tutor. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. That is the end of section 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers. That is the end of the listening test. In the IELTS test, you would now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. To stay updated with latest videos and tips, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Press the bell icon and never miss any update. Thank you for watching this video. To stay updated with latest videos and tips, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Press the bell icon and never miss any update. Thank you for watching this video.